All right, I want to talk about um, a little bit of what this guy is teaching, Toad House 7, Homestead. Um, he seems to be talking about uh, the millennial reign quite a bit, and I'm not really familiar with them. But I've noticed uh, in scrolling through who's talking about this stuff, he's been uh, talking about it quite a bit. And he's got, you know, 30-minute videos, uh, Millennial Rain, Millennial Rain, Millennial Rain. And so this video right here, I just want to take a clip of what he says and uh, to make a couple of points. I want to make two points, and I also watched this one right here, and I'll talk about that here in a second. But let me play uh, a little bit of this. are in a mighty battle against a world that's deceived, against churches that are our biggest enemies. Okay. Now that will be hard to understand, to digest, especially if you're new to it, but our biggest enemies are the d -nodals, the Rob Skibas. They are not our friends. They are not deceived. Okay. Understand that. They're not deceived. They're not like, well, that's interesting. Why? Why do some Christians believe Jesus already returned? No, no, no. He's, he's throwing mud at it, making it seem absurd. Not for one instant talking about what's true. Okay, so did you catch that? He says... I believe Jesus already returned. No. He's talking about... he. It, I get the impression... Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm getting the impression that he believes Jesus already returned. Not to see. They're not like, oh, well, that's interesting. Why? Why do some Christians believe Jesus already returned? All right, and, and I'll explain why he. Uh, well, let's. I guess let's let's tackle that first. All right, because uh, there are certain people that do not understand one particular word in the Bible, and to me, it's a combination of not having faith and not knowing the Bible, all right? Because if you don't have faith, you're not going to understand the Bible. And then, of course, um, it, until you read the Bible, you're not going to know what the Bible says, right? So let's scroll down here. Um, of course, I'm sure you're, you should be familiar with Matthew 24. The disciples come to Jesus and ask him, What shall be the sign of thy coming? and of the end of the world and Jesus very clearly very plainly lays it out for us and then after the end of the world he gives a parable and he says verily I say unto you this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled now um, this is in reference to not just the parable, but to everything that he laid out here in Matthew 24 concerning the end of the world. Now, at the very end is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and the angels gather together his elect. All right. Now, it's real simple. If this was not enough for you, you could very easily go, uh, you know, study this out and see at the last trump is when Jesus comes in the uh, clouds of heaven. And like in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, Notice that at the last trump, and then, of course, in Matthew 24, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. That's the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And, of course, we, we 
can piece it together. I mean, this is all throughout the Bible. The, the evidence is overwhelming. All right. And, oh, was that the same? No, 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 no. Excuse me. First Thessalonians 4. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. This is talking about the same time. With the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Now the trump of God, the last trump, the great sound of the trumpet, is the same thing. It's all the end of the world. And... Um, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is the end of, of the world, okay? Very simple stuff. This is, there's a lot of other passages I could give you in, in particular, even in Revelation 20 which is where people talk about the millennial reign and again it's not Jesus reigning it's those of us that are saved reigning with Christ right now if Jesus is not reigning in your life right now how can you rightly say that you are saved right it's very clearly this is talking about right now we are reigning with Christ we are uh, uh, priest and kings of God right now we are a holy priesthood and holy nation a royal priesthood excuse me and the second death has no power over us that are saved we are born of God and of course in Revelation 20 verse 11 is the great white throne whose face the earth and heaven fled away this is parallel with Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven and the sun being darkened the moon shall not give her light the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken alright whose face heaven and earth fled away alright now to address this gentleman's false ideology if you will that Jesus already came first of all let me share a verse with you let's do it this way who concerning the truth have erred this is 2nd Timothy chapter 2 verse 18 who concerning the truth have erred saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some now uh, so that's exactly what's happening I mean it's a it's a remarkable really how the Bible is so accurate in foretelling the world that we live in right now because there are people who are saying the resurrection has passed already and this is evidence of it right here all right Jesus, it, I mean it's it seems ridiculous but this guy he seriously believes it he seriously believes Jesus has already come and gathered together his elect and you know <laughs> I can't explain it fully because it it's really it is nonsensical. It really is. So he's caught up on this word generation. All right. And here in verse 34, verily I say to you this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. So in my opinion this requires going back and taking a look at what Jesus is saying. The very first thing he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. Right? For many will come in my name as a, claiming to be a Christian, saying Jesus is the Christ, and shall deceive many. And that's exactly what we're seeing in the world today. 
and wars and rumors of wars we're seeing now nation rising up against nation famines pestilences earthquakes sorrows uh, people are being killed uh, people are being offended uh, betraying one another false prophets iniquity abounding and there's a, the assurance here in verse 13 that people will still be getting saved all the way to the end even though we have to endure these great tribulations and the gospel of the kingdom believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations and then the end shall come and the abomination of desolation desolation is without faith and so without getting into that I mean it's that sim to put it simply is um, uh, this is uh, the abomination of desolation the desolation of unbelief if you will okay and I'd like to get into this this is a whole nother subject but again very simple desolation without faith and woe to them that are with child and pray that your flight be not in the winter in great tribulation and accept those days be short and there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened now all these things are happening right now and they were happening back then and they are getting worse and worse and worse as we get closer to the end all right there shall arise false Christ false prophets and shall show signs and great wonders this has been happening ever since All right. and then uh, of course we have the end the very end when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all right so all these things are happening they've been happening for a very long time so when we read this generation shall not pass that's the generation that Jesus is talking about he's not talking about uh, you know, hey, Peter, in your generation, or whoever, you know, he's talking about this generation right here. And this generation is equivalent or parallel to the thousand years in Revelation 20. The thousand years in Revelation 20 is from the time of Jesus bringing in his kingdom remember he says the nation or the the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof right so the kingdom of God is with us that have faith and are a born of God right so this generation this thousand years is from the time of his setting up his kingdom to the time of his return that's the thousand years that's the generation these are the things which we have to endure and then the end comes all right and when the end comes uh, right here 29 through 31 and then of course here in 11 and beyond is the judgment and the judgment of God is are you saved or are you not saved it's not all right how many sins do you got you got 14 billion sins all right well you got to make an account for each sin it's not that at all if you got one sin the judgment is death you'll die the second death now if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you're born of God you got zero sin so if you're like a computer geek or whatever you understand data you got zeros and ones that's the judgment of God 
how many sins do you got? Do you got zero or do you got one? If you got one, you're going to die. If you got zero, you're given everlasting life. All right, very simple, very simple stuff. All right, and then <clears throat> I think I I think I covered it all. That's the two things I wanted to cover: the generation of Matthew twenty four thirty four. This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now, uh, I have to make this point because I make this point every time I, I talk about this. In order for you to say this, he was talking to, to you know, who was it? Peter? Uh, who are the disciples? Aren't they named? Give me just a second here. I, w I just want to take a look. I, it seems like I don't remember stuff, and I, I don't want to leave this out. just want to make a point. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, right? Okay. Peter, this is not, it's not like he said, all right, James, your generation will not pass. Or Peter, Peter, your generation will not pass. John, your generation will will not pass. Andrew, your generation will not pass till all these things be fulfilled. He's not, he's not, refer, okay, uh, listen, if he's going to say that, and this is the argument this guy's making, that he said basically to Andrew, look, your generation will not pass until all these things are fulfilled, which includes uh, the, the gathering together of the elect right when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and gathers together his elect it so in other words the saved those that are going to get saved are are saved and that's it and there's no hope for us now because it already passed we missed it it's over we get we're left out we're left behind all of us none of us can be saved and I mean really there's no mention at all of being saved after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and then so I mean that's that's what you're saying is that the people that were gonna get saved are already saved and we're all doomed to hell now we're just Life is absolutely meaningless right now because that was the one chance to get saved and it's too late. You were born in vain and you'll die in vain and there's no hope for you right now because the resurrection has already passed. That's it. I'm the, I mean, if you're going to be honest about what you're teaching, that's it. And... <laughs> this verse also oops yikes this verse also would be written in vain so essentially everything in Matthew 24 would be written in vain everything written in 2nd Tim Timothy chapter 2 would be written in vain who concerning the truth have erred saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some you have to say that's you got to that's no good. You just take your your black marker and, and just black that out because it doesn't mean anything. In fact, you do that with every page of the Bible because you're teaching that the resurrection is past already. The end of the world is already keen. And... <laughs> It doesn't make any sense, does it? I mean, that's if you're being honest about what you're teaching, you have to say that the resurrection, I mean, that's what you are saying, is that the resurrection has already happened. The end of the world has already come. Because the resurrection and the end of the world is the same thing. I already showed you that at the last trump, the great sound of a trumpet, at the end of the world is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven just as he promised. 
and he gathers together the elect. The angels of the God gather together his elect. We are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air, and then Satan is loosed from his prison. And why is he loosed? To gather together the unsaved. It's right there in the Bible. All you have to do is read it and believe it. And then fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all, destroys them all. And destroys not just them that are unsaved, but he destroys wickedness, and evilness, and sin, and sorrow, and death, and all that forever. And pain. There will be no more pain, no more tears, no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. All these things will be done away with. All right. So, uh, the idea that this has already happened, it, it's ridiculous. And my advice would be to read the Bible, not just read it, but believe that this is from God. It's for us, it's to us, and it's about us. All right, so... Uh, he in this video or the other video, yes, I don't know why they call it the um, what was that Mount Olive, uh, uh Sermon on the Mount or the Olivia the Olivia Discord or whatever they call it discourse, and it's because he's on the Mount of Olives, and I don't call it that stuff. I don't I don't know what I don't know how to pronounce Olivia or whatever that word is. What do, what do they call that? Olivia Discourse? Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that word. But that's why. That's why he... Uh, and I think that's all in the... Okay, let me then also address Dean Oldle and... Uh, Rob Skiba. I don't know anything about those guys really. I, I've heard them both talk before. I'm not sure what they believe. But um, so I can't address what they're teaching. I don't know if they, they might they might have a wrong. And it wouldn't surprise me if they do have a wrong. But um, it doesn't help when you're trying to correct somebody that you believe is wrong and then you're not able to show what is right and so the the two videos that I watched of this gentleman he goes on and on about how wrong they are but he makes very little mention if any of about what is the truth and that's more important than all the lies of the world if you're going to tackle every lie in the world and not know the truth, what good is it? So when you're correcting somebody, you want to establish what the truth is so that makes the error more obvious. right? And I, I hope I've done that today. That this idea that the generation of all these things are already passed It is ridiculous, all right. Because it, with, I mean, just be honest. If that's what you believe, you have to be honest and say you nobody can get saved, and you're essentially saying you're not saved because all that resurrection, the saving of souls, has already happened. So just be honest and say you're not saved, and you don't believe anybody can be saved today just be honest about what you believe use logic and common sense and just say hey the resurrection is passed already and nobody can get saved of course that's in conflict with the Bible but I, I think if you're gonna be honest I mean if you're in the truth we must worship the Father in spirit and in truth and if you're being honest that's what you have to believe if you believe the resurrection is passed already now let me end this with a parable that Jesus gives us concerning the wheat 
and the tares because this is simple as simple gets right in Matthew 13 let me just open it up here he gives a parable about the wheat and the tares right and uh, so another parable put he forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field the key uh, phrase in this parable is kingdom of heaven I want you to understand this now the kingdom of heaven is right now while men slept his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat so there are unsaved people among the saved people and went his way but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit then appeared tares also so the servants of the householder came and said unto him sir didst not thou sow good seed in thy field from whence then has it tares he said unto them an enemy has done this the servants said unto him wilt thou then that we go and gather them up the tares but he said nay lest while ye gather up the tares ye root up also the wheat with them so the idea is to let them grow together let the saved grow together with the unsaved all right let them both grow together until the harvest and the harvest is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ in the clouds of heaven just as he promised and he will gather together the saved the elect and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tares that's when we are oh, I'm sorry that's that's when that if we relate this to uh, Revelation 20 that's when the the Satan is released or let loose loosed from his prison and he gathers together the tares to gather them to, that's why Satan is loosed to gather together the unsaved all right and gather ye together first the tares which is the unsaved and bind them in bundles to burn them to burn them and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them all right and then gather you to and bind it but gather the wheat into my barn that's when we are lifted up we are changed in the twinkling of an eye first the dead in Christ then those of us which are alive and remain shall be lifted up with them to be to meet the Lord in the air so shall we ever be with the Lord so this is the it's the same thing it's not different judgment it's not different dispensations it's not different anything it's all the same thing all you have to do is connect the dots the more you read the Bible the more you'll be able to connect the dots and of course you have to have faith in order to understand how all these things are related very very simple okay so that's that parable right there all right hopefully that makes sense for somebody and um, you know the, this guy uh, he seems sincere but obviously he's utterly confused over one word and that's so sad it really is one word in the Bible and he's got a whole doctrine and he's not the only one obviously but one word in the Bible and because you don't want to understand what that word means you want to have this entire doctrine that the resurrection has passed already and nobody can get saved from here on out and that can only come not from God but from the devil all right I guess that's enough uh, if you guys have any questions comments or uh, you know if I'm being too hard on this guy let me know thank you